So there's some information we can get from their enrollment um, file. It tells us about their literacy in their first language, um, their overall um, ESOL level, as well as their individual domain scores. So we know that if their overall level is an intermediate, they might have they might be higher in writing, lower in reading. So being able to look at their individual domain scores um, gives you a little bit more of a clear picture. Um, we like to talk to the teachers from the previous years. We like to talk on our ESOL team to the teacher who had them the year before. Um, I like to talk to the classroom teachers and check their notes and things like that. Um, a lot of times the, their ESOL level doesn't actually seem to line up very nicely with their true proficiency, so getting some of that anecdotal evidence is really important. Um, for grouping purposes and for making sure that you're differentiating appropriately and um, creating engaging activities for them. My district is very large. Um, and we have an ESOL office as part of the district that uploads a file, I think about every two weeks, of all the students in the school system that are enrolled in ESOL. Um, and so ESOL teachers are supposed to, you know, check that file against our records um, to find out about new students, but as part of that file, they also include information about students, like where they're from, when they started school in the United States. Um, and there is a column as well for whether or not they're literate in their first language. So it often is a sort of a detective process. Students' records from whatever prior schooling they had or not um, do arrive at the school, um, but they usually arrive after the student does. And depending on where the student's coming from, they may arrive significantly later. So um, that that's, that's something I try to check, but it's not something that I would rely upon to check. It's super important to know what the student's home language is. And I have a, not a funny story, but a sad story of my first year of teaching where I didn't have any formal way of identifying what languages my students spoke. And unfortunately, one of my female students, she ended up not speaking Spanish. And I thought she spoke Spanish because she was from Guatemala, but she spoke one of the dialects in Guatemala. And I didn't have a survey or anything at the time in my first year of teaching. So that right there, I was so disappointed in myself for not knowing what this girl spoke and just speaking Spanish to her and her just nodding and smiling and not knowing what I was saying the entire year. And even her classmates speaking Spanish to her the entire year, even my paraprofessional. So after that, like I had to come up with a, with a certain way and, uh, a certain way to figure out what my kids spoke. And I do a formal survey in the beginning of the year. That's the first thing that they write and I say that they can do it in English or in their first language or use tr Google Translate, whatever you need to do, as long as I can take a picture and translate it into English. Um, so that's the first thing that I do is do a, for a formal student survey.